Welcome to this presentation on the economics of forest landscape restoration. Um, my name is Lincoln Davis. I work for Unique. Uh, my colleague Duncan Gronko will be helping me out with this presentation. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. In this slide, you'll see the basic setup of a forest landscape restoration initiative. So we're going from a degraded landscape to a, a sustainably managed productive landscape. Um, and this is also the basis for the economic analysis. So we've got a, a economic outcome from a degraded landscape, and then we compare that to how the economic situation would look when the landscape has been restored. Um, and the economics of FLR methodology provides different options for different categories of land use. One of the most important things about this methodology that we've developed is that it's flexible and we can apply it in different contexts. So when I say flexible in different contexts, I don't, I don't only mean different landscapes, but I also mean different um, situations. So for example, there's a, a lot of data available or there's very little data available, or I also mean what the decision maker, what his, his aim is. Um, and so we, we've developed, so there's three tiers of data that we, we use. Um, if you look in that pyramid, you can see that the bottom layer, we're using secondary data so not from the field. Um, the second layer, tier two, we're using field data um, and direct collection of primary data. And then tier three is spatially explicit data related to the specific area that we're working in. Um, the, uh, the impact is generally looked at in terms of one hectare models. So we build a, a model of different land uses and then we combine them to make a picture of the landscape. Um, under forest landscape restoration, so what I talked about earlier, we've got forest land and we have, for example, under forests, there are um, planted forests or there's just forest protection. So those would be two options for improving a forest area. In agricultural land, for example, you could have agroforestry or you could have soil rehabilitation. Um, and then finally, on this slide, the, um, the results are presented two levels. There's a financial analysis we present and there's an economic analysis. So the financial analysis is from the private sector perspective where we use market discount rates and we don't include environmental externalities in the results. And for the economic analysis, we take a public perspective and we do include those externalities. Okay, so just to explain what the discount rate means. Um, so in the financial discount rate, it's higher than the social discount rate. And you can imagine it like this because if I want to consume something in the future and I have $1 today that I can consume today and I have $1 in the future. Now, if you want to make it so that those $2 are equal to me, you have to pay me more for the dollar in the future. And so if I have $1 today and then you have to pay me $1.05 tomorrow in order for that to be equal for me. So that's one way to think about the discount rate. In this slide, you can see the basic setup of the forest landscape restoration methodology. So firstly, we set the scene, we define a target group, and we set our questions for analysis. Um, steps two and three, where we collect data and we model the costs and benefits, we, we use these two steps in, in an iterative way so that, for example, the model will tell us oh, we need data on this, so we, can, we need to look for that, or there's a data limitation, so we adjust the model to reflect that. Um, in the last stage, the analysis of the results, we use different indicators, so economic indicators such as net present value, benefit cost ratio, um, internal rate of return, um, and then we also use an sensitivity analysis to determine what the key variables are, what's driving the results. So now I'd like to present a, a case study, uh, which we recently did a, a study in, in Madagascar in the, in a, the Mariarano Bay, uh, which is in the north of Madagascar. Um, and you can see it's quite close to a fairly major population center. It's about 75 kilometers away from Mahajanga. The Mariana Bay, it's a mangrove area with 2,500 hectares of, of mangroves. Um, the population is around about 5,000 people, coming up to 5,000 people. And uh, there are seven villages that are spread throughout the mangrove area. Um, this major population center, Mahajanga, is growing very rapidly, and that's putting pressure on um, resources from the Mariana Bay. So the main economic activities in the Mariana Bay are subsistence agriculture, ecotourism, 
wood and charcoal production and fishing and crab collection. And uh, mangroves are actually important for all of those different activities. You could, you could even argue that subsistence agriculture is important. Um, the mangroves are important for subsistence agriculture because um, they provide a coastal protection uh, service. Um, so what we found in this region is that the mangroves are being overharvested, um, and that uh, even though currently harvesting mangroves in the Mariana Bay is illegal, um, but one upshot of the fact that it's illegal is that there's not, a, there can't be a management regime put in place. There can't be a, a, regu a regulation of mangrove harvesting because it's not allowed. Um, so the illegal harvest just continues um, unchecked. And what we wanted to do with this study is we wanted to look at what the costs and benefits are to restoring the landscape and having a sustainable management regime. Uh, so in this slide, we talk about the basic assumptions that go into the model. Um, so in the base case, uh, we've got uh, a level of degradation of mangroves that we've we've modeled that reflects what we saw in the field. Um, we have an annual deforestation rate of 0.3%, so that's the amount of mangroves that's being lost every year. Um, we modeled just natural regeneration of the mangrove forests from that degraded state that they were in. Um, and in the base case scenario, we assumed that the current illegal rates of harvest would continue. The economic activities in the Mariana Bay, uh, two of the most important activities in terms of the amount of money they generate are crab fishing and, um, and fishing. And uh, we know that there is a connection between mangrove forests and, and uh, production of those aquatic uh, resources, but um, we don't know what the relationship is. Um, so, you know, it could be something that the crab, crab production in this area is more driven by overfishing or over, over collection than, um, than by the mangrove habitat, but we don't, we don't know. So we've made a very open assumption and said, that there's a one-to-one -one correlation between the surface area of mangroves and the crab and fish catch to, in order to show what the impact of mangroves could be in terms of the crab production. Um, and then in the project scenario, we've got a sustainable forest management regime that's been in place um, and we're putting, restoring all of the degraded land that is degraded each year. So there's, so that we maintain the whole area of, of mangroves. This is uh, quickly just to um, present the, the basic structure of the model again. So we have one hectare models where we have timber, charcoal, um, crab, fish, ecotourism are actually, they're not one hectare models, those are measured by individual fishers or, or crab collectors. Um, and then those are the inputs that go into our business as usual scenario where we've got a deforested area that increases and we have a mangrove harvested area that is slowly degrading. And then in our project scenario, we calculate the economic benefits of an area where we reduce the harvest rate to a sustainable level and we reforest the mangroves. So this last slide presents the, the results of the analysis. Um, this slide is a little bit complicated to, to explain, so uh, I'll take a little bit of time doing that. Um, basically what this represents is the project scenario net present values minus the business as usual scenario net present values for each of the activities. So you'll see that um, there are four sort of sets of columns. There's local impacts, regional national impacts, and international impacts. And then the final column on the right, or the final two columns on the right are the combined impacts. Um, and what you can see is that the mangroves influence, you know, more than just the local level, it's also there's regional impacts, there's international impacts, um, and you can see that different costs are felt at different levels. So, for example, at the international level, we can see that there's a, that's where the costs of the project are being felt, so it's funded internationally, but then the benefits are experienced at the local level. Um, and then uh, you can also see in this table that there's a difference between the financial outcome and the economic outcome. And in each case, the economic outcome shows a greater benefit because we've got a, we're using a, a lower discount rate. So we value future values higher than, than previously, um, that, sorry, than in the financial case. Um, and we're also including ecosystem services. So in this case, the ecosystem services that we're including are carbon benefits, 